I know what you're thinking right now. There's not enough Colin Cowherd in my life. <laughs> I hear it every day from my family. Listen, if you want more, subscribe. All right, let's bring on Tyler Dunn, the guy I lean on when it comes to the Green Bay Packers. I honestly felt, Tyler, um, I felt they were the better team. I thought they had better schemes. I thought they outplayed the 49ers. I was almost floored <laughs> when the Niners scored with about, you know, 40 seconds left, whatever it was. But but this felt like, this really to me felt like the Green Bay Packers came in more prepared and with a better game plan. I, I, I would have been I would have been floored. I think it would have been a devastating loss had they let this slip away. That was my interpretation. How about you? That that was mine as well, Colin. I mean, down the stretch, you could see that look of just exasperation in, in Aaron Rodgers' face, Devontae Adams in San Francisco's going down, melting the clock for what we think is the game winning drive, right? I mean, those huge plays by by Kittle, Debo Samuel, Usechek. I mean, just superhuman kind of plays. I, I think they probably had a little bit more to do with those plays than Jimmy Garoppolo, who then inexplicably snaps the ball with, what, 12, 13 seconds left on the clock. Um, but, yeah, you can see Green Bay feeling like, oh, this is getting away from us, getting away from us because of what the point you just made. They, they, they were the better team. They had the better game plan. Every call seemed to be going against Green Bay. Um, so I guess the ball doesn't lie, right? Amazing Crosby uh, hits that 51-yarder at the end. Devonte Adams looked like he was knocked out and then was back a minute later. I, I it it was hard to explain. I do wonder, and this is really a time to celebrate Green Bay's win because it was a, a really one of the best games of the year. They they really feel incredibly reliant on Devonte Adams in big spots, and I mean Tyler, like they don't have a second option. Does does do you think Aaron trusts? Is there a number two he trusts on this team? I think that's probably the point to make here is that that trust, because that's how this season was left off in 2020, right? Bay, where he's forcing the ball to Devontae Adams one too many times, especially on that last drive against his body when he had that shot to run it in on, on third down. So I don't know. I mean, I, I tend to think Marquez Valdez-Scandlin is a big guy with speed, you don't have a lot of receivers with that combination that he has. And he had, he had some plays against San Francisco. Alan Lazard hit the big catch, but, you know, undrafted guy who was on Jacksonville's practice squad at one point. Not a ton of talent in there that, that's bursting out that was wanted around the NFL. I think Robert Tunyon's a very good tight end. You wonder how much of that has to do with Aaron Rodgers. So, to your point, it's probably a combination of everything. I, I think that he probably should trust these other guys a little bit more than he does. But maybe that's not necessarily the supporting cast that you see around guys like Matthew Stafford, even Tom Brady. So it's a combination. If they don't have Devontae Adams out there at the end of the game, they're not winning that that game. It's, it's crazy. I mean, Chris Collinsworth is saying, hey, looks good to go. Look, looks fine down there. Did you, did you see the same hit that we saw, Chris? I mean, he was lights right. out. Yeah. You know, it, it's interesting. Um, I, I thought the NA, you, you cover the entire league, Tyler Dunn joining us you you cover the entire league um and so I want to talk about the Niners for a second it, it, there are parts of them I think we would both subscribe to the belief that the NFC West is probably the deepest division it's really good uh, the Rams by adding Matt Stafford to Sean Jackson have kind of added a home run component they didn't have to a really good football team uh Seattle just can't make stops I don't trust Cliff Kingsbury and so that leaves me with the Rams in San Francisco. And I got to tell you, watching tonight, Tyler, I almost watch San Francisco and wonder if their corners eliminate them from Super Bowl con contention. I just don't like the Niners' corners at all. You know, there, there's certain components of teams, and you're like, oh, they're just not good enough there. The coaching's too good in this league. I, I think the Niners' corners are so bad and so weak I, and again, Aaron, any time he needed a big completion, he got it all game. He did. I mean, it's it's one thing to have a dominant defensive line like they have, like Washington has. I mean, that Washington-Buffalo game earlier, hey, Washington has first-round picks all across the D-line. What did it? How, how much good did that do him? Josh Allen had a field day. He did whatever he wanted. Yeah. So, I mean, I think these quarterbacks, especially Josh Allens and the Aaron Rodgers, if you've got a little mobility – 
some athleticism, that 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 strong arm, something that can get you out of a jam, get you out of that pressure. Um, it doesn't really matter who you have on the defensive line. Sometimes it really doesn't hey, if you're that bad in the secondary. So yeah, yeah, San Francisco's got some issues back there. I don't think you can just solve the issues through the course of the season. That's something you got to fix in March, in April. Um, they're going to have to win high scoring games. Now, can Jimmy Garoppolo win you that game? I think people are going to come away from this game tonight with different interpretations. You might look at that drive you put together and say, holy cow, 75 yards, two minutes. That That is all the justification I need to know Jimmy Garoppolo should be the starter. I tend to think that those other guys made those plays, and let's not forget him chucking it into the ground behind him the drive before. I mean, just a yeah. ridiculous – just a ridiculous play. Yeah, I mean, he looks small with Aaron on the same field. He looks small. True. Um, I, I never like to give a, a quarterback too much credit on one of those two-and-a-half-minute, three-minute drives in the game because, you know, the coverage changes. And, I mean, Green Bay was willing to give up yards, just not chunk yards. Uh, plus, a lot of that drive, about 50% of it, was a great George Kittle play. So, I mean, and between Debo Samuel and George Kittle, I mean, you're talking about those are two of the best 50 players in the league. I mean, those are really stupendously gifted guys. But where do you land today? I mean, you know, it's funny. I look at the Packers. I think they missed David Bakhtiari at left tackle. Um, I, I Sometimes I worry about them at corner beyond Jair Alexander. I, I worry about their second corner. I worry about David Bakhtiari. They got a pretty good pass rush tonight. I got to tell you, and that's a good Niner offensive front. Where do you land with the Packers today? What are you really happy with and what concerns you? I think you have to be thrilled, number one, with Aaron Rodgers' play. I mean, two weeks ago, rightfully so, a lot of us were questioning his desire, how, how vested he was into this season. It did not look good. It was ugly against New Orleans. And I think that that, that was a quarterback tonight that – delivered in big moments like he has his whole career. So that's probably what's given them a sigh of relief more than anything is the quarterback that was MVP last season. That's what you saw against San Francisco. Defensively, though, man, I mean, that, that's about as impressive as Green Bay's defense has looked in a yeah. long, long time. That's what I thought. I mean, they, they got pressure from you know, guys like Dean Lowry. I mean, you see that spin move. He's right in Garoppolo's yep. face. Um, at corner, you know, Eric Stokes, I know he's young. He's going to give up plays. Hey, he had a couple of, he, I'll tell you what, uh, Tyler, he's sticky. You don't separate from him. When they took him, you know, I had a couple of scouts reach out to me and solicit him, like, whoa, th th this guy can play. I mean, they just got themselves a player. Maybe Aaron Rodgers doesn't like it. It's not a weapon. But that's a cornerback that's going to play sooner rather than later, which is such a premium position, as we're talking about with this game in San Francisco needing an Eric Stokes. So I think the upgrade from Kevin Kevin King in a big way there. And I think defensively, after what you saw against the Saints, and really that, that first half against the Lions was just as ugly, that's about as good as Green Bay's defense has looked in a long, long time. 